Is this the best walleye lure that you're not using? Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Alright guys, no suspense here, okay? The lure or the rig I'm talking about is pulling a crawler behind a flatfish, alright? And as you can see, this flatfish has been doctored up a little bit, alright? Uh, this is an F7 size flatfish. I remove the single uh, treble hook from it, add a swivel, add three or four inches of a heavy mono or fluorocarbon, and then I put a slow death hook on behind that, right? And you thread your crawler on that. Okay guys, why am I adding the three or four inches between the flatfish and the slow death hook? Okay, now, a while back I did a video, it was titled Walleyes and Crawler Harnesses Beyond the Normal Methods, okay? And in that video I kind of get into my theory of why I like to add a little distance between the spinner and the crawler, or in this case the flatfish and the crawler, okay? Uh, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But in a nutshell, the whole idea behind the spinner and crawler, or in this case the flatfish and crawler, is that movement, that flash, attracts fish from a certain distance away. As they're closing in, maybe the spinner, maybe the flatfish starts to look less and less like something they want to eat. And of course that's where the crawler comes in, right? Okay, you spinner and crawler guys know this. That's where the crawler comes in. It looks right. It smells right. It even tastes right if they take a little bite of it, okay? And that's kind of the deal sealer. They hit that, you catch the fish, okay? That, that's the idea, right? Well, my theory is, you know, if you kind of separate out that crawler from the flatfish or the crawler from the spinner, just a little bit, that crawler even looks more and more like something that the fish wants to eat, okay? When they're kind of tight together, it's kind of, well, well that's still a little weird looking to me separate them out a little bit the idea is oh that really looks right that crawler really looks right boom I'm gonna hit it okay and, and I'm just kind of basing that on, on like some of the underwater footage that you might see uh, of people pulling spinners and crawlers a lot of times the fish comes up and they're just kind of pecking at the crawler kind of uh, sampling the crawler they don't necessarily come in and just uh, hit the spinner right the spinner attracted them from a distance away but when they get close they don't seem to be nearly as interested in the spinner or in this case the flatfish okay now uh, it certainly serves a purpose right because if you were just if you just threw a crawler on a hook and you drug that around you're probably not going to attract as many fish certainly if they if they got to come from a distance uh, they might not even see it right so so the spinner and the flatfish serve a purpose okay but as the fish gets closer and closer, eh, you know, maybe they're a lot more interested in that crawler at that point. So, again, the idea is separate it out a little bit. Maybe it even looks more natural. So, why am I going with a slow death hook behind these flatfish as opposed to some of the, like, two and three hook setups that you'll find on uh, traditional spinner rigs? Well, same reason a lot of guys are going to slow death hooks behind their spinners, or in my case, I like to put them behind these flatfish, okay? Uh, it just gives that crawler just a little twist, just a little spin, all right? That's the purpose of adding the swivel to the setup. You know, it just allows that crawler to, to spin a little bit more freely back there. I like the bigger hooks, okay? I think you get good hook sets with them, all right? And also, you know, I think the crawler stays on the slow death hooks quite a bit better, okay? Um, I know a lot of guys just run a half a crawler on slow death hooks, and I do that. 
Um, but I don't have a problem putting a full crawler on this slow death, leaving a little bit hang off the, the tail. And if that gets bit off, it's not the end of the world, okay? Generally with these slow death hooks, these little bit bigger ones, you'll always have at least the length of the hook as far as keeping the crawler on, okay? So I don't think you get picked clean quite as much with these slow death hooks, so I like that too. Okay, the next thing you might be asking, why am I going with a flat fish, okay, to pull a crawler instead of the traditional spinners? right? Spinners have caught a ton of walleyes over the years. Spinners have won tons of tournaments. Spinners work great, okay? And, and they do, all right? Um, but before we get into that, I just want to take a quick time out uh, with a word from my uh, one and only sponsor, Camaro's Crawlers. Now for a commercial break from Camaro's Crawlers. Camaro's Crawlers is carrying a new exciting fishing product for the walleye fishermen. The product is called the Walleye Extra Value Meal. Now, Camaro's Crawlers is not a restaurant. Camaro's Crawlers is a bait shop. All right, if you've uh, seen some of my past videos, you might know this. Um, Camaro's Crawlers is my one and only sponsor, my buddy Ronnie Camaro. Uh, he's, been, he's been running a bait shop out of his parents' house where he lives for about four years now. So the Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value Meal, it's for the walleyes. Now, you guys know what this is like, right? You're heading out walleye fishing, you swing by the bait shop, and you're kind of wondering, I don't know, should I get crawlers, should I get leeches, should I get minnows? Um, and, and maybe you know that you want to get all three of those, but it's just kind of a hassle to say the whole thing, all right? Well, with Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value Meal, you don't have to worry about that anymore. This is the Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value Meal. All you have to do is walk into Camaro's Crawlers and say, I'll have the Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value Meal, please. And this is what you get, okay? Uh, Ronnie, or, or maybe Ronnie's pro staff or mom, uh, Ronnie's mom works at the bait shop occasionally. Uh, so Ronnie or Ronnie's pro staff or mom will hand you this bag and you're all good to go out walleye fishing, okay? You got, uh, you got your dozen crawlers right there, boom, and you got your dozen leeches, okay, those are all in the bag, and and you'll notice, you know, you got these really cool walleye graphics, you know, on the bag, it's, it's pretty neat, you know, it could be like a collector's bag or something, I know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Ronnie's girlfriend did the uh, walleye graphics for the bag, I, I know she did uh, the graphics uh, for the sign, for the Camaro's Crawler's sign in the back. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, uh, where's the minnows, right? Well, they're in here too. Right there in this nice insulated styrofoam cup, okay? You got a dozen walleye minnows, okay? Perfect size uh, for traveling, fits right in the cup holder of your truck, fits right in the cup holder on your boat. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, hey, dozen walleye minnows is not going to last very long in this cup, right? It's just it's just too small, okay? Well, Ronnie thinks of everything, all right? So, included in every Camaro's Crawler's walleye extra value meal is a manual aerator, okay? You just take the aerator out of its sterile package, you poke it through the top of the minnow cup, and you just blow into it periodically, okay? And you're good to go. Now normally, Ronnie will sell a dozen crawlers for two bucks, a dozen leeches for two bucks, and a dozen walleye minnows for two bucks. But with the Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value Meal, you get this whole thing for just seven dollars. All right, uh, I think it's a pretty sweet deal, and I had heard that uh, Stan Grossman also thought it was a pretty sweet deal. But it doesn't just end there, okay? With every purchase of a Camaro's Crawler's Walleye Extra Value Meal, you get a free prize, okay? Now, in this one, it's, a, uh, it's an orange uh, pre-rigged rubber worm, all right? And I don't know if these are, you know, real popular with walleye fishermen. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they're real popular with any fishermen, actually. But, you know, what the heck, it, it's a free prize. And like Ronnie says, you know, it's just kind of exciting to see what you're going to get, 
you know, because it'll be a different uh, it'll be a different prize in in each uh, Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value meal. So head on down to Camaro's Crawlers and pick up your Camaro's Crawlers Walleye Extra Value meal. All right, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. Stan Grossman thinks it's a pretty sweet deal, and I think you will too. All right, guys. Again, why am I pulling the crawlers behind a flatfish instead of a traditional spinner? Okay, and and the simple answer is these flatfish can be worked very slow. Okay, much slower than uh, the normal traditional spinner rigs can. Okay, now if you think about it, like you think about the whole walleye technique spectrum, right? And as as far as like fast to slow, right at the top you got probably pulling crankbaits, right? It's very fast, a lot of coverage, you're looking for active fish, okay? Probably just below that, you've got your spinners and crawlers, right? Uh, you can work them a little slower, okay? And then you're presenting that crawler, that live bait, to maybe entice some of the neutral, the negative fish. But yeah, you're covering uh, quite a bit of ground pulling spinners, okay? And probably one notch below that is where I would put these flatfish, okay? Because you can work them quite a bit slower than your traditional spinners, okay? But you still got the crawler, all right? You still got that crawler that's, uh, you're trying to entice those uh, neutral to negative fish, okay? And then probably, you know, below that would be your jigs and rigs. And then maybe right at the bottom as far as, you know, speed would be your slip bobber presentations, okay? So, you know, if you're maybe out there and, you're, and your spinners uh, and crawlers, you're thinking, ah, maybe this is just a little fast. The fish seem a little off today. This might, this might be a little too fast presentation for them. Maybe you could drop down, you know, a notch and try these flatfish, you know, with a crawler. Or if you're out there jigging and rigging, or you're out there slip bobber fishing, and you're like, yeah, I'd like to have a little bit more coverage, you know, maybe you can just step it up a notch and go to the flatfish and the crawl. Okay, so how do I use these, all right? Well, I'm generally gonna be trolling or wind drifting them. When I'm trolling them, it's all the same normal stuff that you would do with uh, any spinner and crawler rig, right? You can put them behind planer boards. You can put snap weights on them. You can put them behind a bottom bouncer. You can long line them. All the same normal stuff works real good with these flatfish too. The only difference is you can troll way slower with these flatfish compared to the uh, traditional spinners and crawlers. And that's where using these for wind drifting really comes in handy. You do not need much wind at all to get a real good action out of this flatfish. Okay, Just a little bit of wind and you're getting real good movement out of these. Where with a regular spinner rig, that might be kind of difficult to achieve at really slow speeds, okay? Uh, in fact, if you've got too much wind and you're going too fast, you're going to want to throw a sock out and slow way down, okay? These flatfish are definitely designed to be worked very, very slow. And that's the main reason I like to fish these flatfish quite a bit, as opposed to the spinners, is because I really do like to fish pretty slow most of the time, okay? Um, most of the time, I am not fishing large pieces of structure, okay? I'm not throwing the lines out and just trolling in a straight line for two miles straight, okay? A lot of the structure that I'm fishing, whether it's weed beds, uh, bars, uh, main lake basins, a lot of that structure that I'm fishing is a little bit on the small side, okay? So instead of just trying to cover it, you know, really fast and look for active fish, a lot of times I'm kind of trying to methodically pick through the smaller pieces of structure, okay? And the kind of the idea is I'm trying to entice the fish that are there, maybe the neutral to negative fish. Now, if I'm trolling these uh, flatfish straight behind the boat, you know, no planer boards or anything, or if I'm wind drifting them, I really like to go with a nice soft tipped rod, okay? Something with a lot of give to it. And I also like to go with monofilament on the reel, okay? And I really like the stretch that the monofilament gives, and I really like that soft-tipped rod to have a little bend and a little give to it also, okay? Now, if fish are just flying on an oar and just slamming these rigs, probably none of that matters. But you guys know a lot of times you're fishing for neutral fish, you're fishing for negative fish, okay? And they can be a little tentative, okay? Uh, you spinner and crawler guys know this. Sometimes the fish will come up, they'll grab the crawler, and they'll just swim with it for a while. They're not really grabbing it and ripping back on it, okay? And I think sometimes they're, they're maybe even trying to mouth it back into their mouth, you know? Just trying to grab a little bit and feed it back into their mouth. And if you've watched any of the underwater footage, you know, this, this does kind of play out uh, quite a bit. Uh, sometimes the fish actually will come up to them and they'll just kind of flare their gills, right? 
and and I think what they're trying to do is suck that bait into their mouth okay and if you think about it that's probably pretty natural for them to do that a lot of times whether it's small minnows leeches bugs walleye probably just swims up to a lot of these things and just just kind of flares their gills and, and sucks those things in so I think sometimes they're even trying to do that uh, with these crawler rigs you know and if you're fishing with a stiff rod if you're fishing with braid um, you're probably not giving them as much opportunity to get that bait back into their mouth you know and get hooks into them another quick tip uh, if you're going to be wind drifting these flatfish, okay? A lot of times uh, when I'm wind drifting and we got the boat sideways and we're getting three or four lines out, okay? Uh, oftentimes these uh, poles are going to be sitting in pole holders. Um, if you can, point those rods up as much as possible, okay? I know sometimes, you know, you want to, the, the lines on the end of the boat, you want to point straight out the ends of the boat, you know, to try to spread the lines even more. But I've found when you point this rod straight up in the air, okay, and, and you've got that, that little bit of roll, you're out wind drifting and that boat is kind of rocking back and forth a little bit, that tip of that rod is kind of pulling and letting back, and pulling and letting back. Of course, that's, that's accentuated, you know, the more you point the rod up into the air. The ones that are pointed straight out, horizontal, it doesn't do much for them. And I've noticed that we get bit a lot more on these center rods that are pointing straight up and, and that's the only difference I can come up with is that those rods are pulling and then kind of falling back and pulling. So the, so the flatfish is kind of being jigged down there. Now, I am not opposed to using like uh, a Berkeley Gulp night crawler off the back of these flatfish, okay? Or, you know, Berkeley makes this pinched off crawler, just a smaller version. It's actually designed for the slow death hooks, okay? I have done that. I have caught fish doing that. It does work, okay? But I don't think it works as good as the real deal, right? The real night crawlers. If you can get real night crawlers, definitely do that. I do believe it works better. Uh, and hey guys, and you know this, right? There is a reason that there is still live bait shops up and running to this day, right? There is a reason that uh, soft plastics haven't shut down every live bait shop uh, across the land yet, okay? And that reason is, in a lot of situations, the live bait just simply works better. All right, guys, so if you're thinking you need to maybe take it down, slow it down a notch from your traditional spinners and crawlers, these flatfish are a pretty good option. Or if you're thinking, you know, I could use a little bit more coverage maybe than your jigs and rigs are giving you, you know, cover a little bit more ground, these flatfish are also a good option for that. Like I said, kind of in that walleye spectrum of presentations from fast to slow, these flatfish kind of fall right in the middle, okay? So, you know, go on and give them a try. All right, and, and leave some comments below. Let me know how it works out for you guys, okay? All right, and also remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.